This is the new Feutech Scorp Mini. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and balance it. And then I'm gonna give you a quick review of what I think of this gimbal. And finally, show you some test footage shot on this gimbal. The very first thing to remember before setting up and balancing are these three secrets. When you're balancing the gimbal, you want to imagine that the center of gravity is in line with the axes of these three motors. And I'll get to that in a second. The second thing to remember is that you will learn how to balance this gimbal. It can be a little frustrating at first if you've never balanced gimbals, but I promise you that you will learn how to do it. And then the third thing is, once you have properly balanced the gimbal, just take note of all of the markings on each of the arms and the motors. Put them in the notes section of your phone so that when you take off the camera or you switch your lens or you put on a new type of camera that has a different weight, you can just refer back to your notes and remember exactly where all the markings were and that way you don't really need to balance it. You just revert back to those markings. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is fully charge the gimbal. You just plug in a USB-C cable. It has fast charging. It should only take an hour and a half to two hours. You're going to take your little accessories pack, pull out the metal screw and attach the base plate to the camera. I've already done it here. The base plate does come with a little wrench to attach it. And just remember that you have this little hole, which is a lens support hole facing the front of the camera. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is once you have your tripod attached, your gimbal fully charged, is you want to unlock the motors. So the motors come locked so that it doesn't get damaged while it's being shipped. With the gimbal, with the trigger pointing forward and the LCD screen pointing towards me, there is a motor on the back called the roll motor. I'm going to flip down this little metallic lock and now you can see that it rolls like this. I'm gonna put it so this bar is parallel with the ground and then I'm gonna lock it in place like that. Then I'm going to take the tilt motor, which is the motor that's on my right, your left, unlock that and then you should see that this is also fully able to move. So this is the first one we're going to adjust. Take your camera. I'm using this Pentax camera. You can use this with a smartphone, an action camera, a compact camera, and even small mirrorless cameras. There are adapters for all of those types. I'm gonna use this one for now. You're going to take this little knob on the bottom base plate and screw it open all the way. You're going to slide in the camera like so. And you're just going to tighten it up and make sure it's locked. And then what you also wanna do is take this little back latch, put it to the unlocked, and try to get, like I said, the center of gravity of the camera as far in line with the axis of this motor. So imagine there's a little line running out of the axis of this motor. You wanna get the center of gravity of the camera and the base plate as much as you can in line with that. So I don't want this way over here. I want it as, pretty much as close as I can to here leaving maybe like a millimeter or a, you know, a centimeter. Now I'm going to lock this latch back. Okay, so once you have that back lock latched, the first thing we're gonna do is adjust the tilt motor. So what I wanna do is point the lens towards the ceiling. And as you can see, when I'm putting the lens towards the ceiling, the camera's rotating that way, it's falling forward. So what that means is that there's too much weight on this side of the axis of this motor. So just imagine it like, you know, a balancing board. It should lay level flat, but it's not. There's too much weight going that way. So what I need to do is unscrew here where you see the lock, which is a new type of locking system, which I love. And you point it towards the ceiling. And so it's falling too much that way. So that means I need to go this way. That means I need to get the weight more in line. So that is actually perfect. You just need to make micro adjustments. Once the lens will remain pointing towards the ceiling when I let go, that means it's perfectly balanced on this motor. So now I just tighten up this little screw here and there it is. Now we wanna point the lens forward and you can see that again, it's falling this way. So what that means is that I have too much weight again going this way. I'm going to loosen this up 
And remember, since it's falling forward, that means I need to push the weight back just ever so slightly, maybe something like that. No, nope, not enough. I'm gonna push it back a little bit more and tighten it. And I'm not gonna get it perfect for the purpose of this video. Forward a little bit more. It's just micro, micro, there we go. Micro, micro adjustments. The fraction of a millimeter will adjust the balance. So now you can see that the lens remains pointing forward. So the next motor that I wanna balance is the roll motor. So that's the one that's on the back here. So now I'm going to unlock that one. And you can see what happens when I let go. The weight is pulling the camera this way. Let me show it from this side. So imagine there's a line running through. It's going too far that way. So just like we did with the others, I need to loosen this one, push the weight back this side, tighten it up. And that's pretty darn good. So if I hold it this way, it goes back a little bit, but it's, it's pretty centered. Now the last one is usually the most difficult. It's the pan motor. So what you wanna do is hold the gimbal parallel with your table or floor, and then I'm going to gently unlock it. Just be careful, because when you unlock it, it can wildly flip around. So I'm gonna unlock it. And now if I point it towards you, you can see that the gimbal, or the camera rather, is going that way. So all I need to do is loosen it up, and you guessed it, push the weight this way. So again, just micro, micro, micro. Gonna retighten it, see if that works. And that's perfect. So now the gimbal should be reasonably balanced so that when you point it in any direction, it should stay there. Again, I didn't do this 100% perfect for this video, but as you can see, if I point it down here, the camera is staying pointed to where I faced it. So that is a balanced gimbal. And you wanna make sure that it's balanced because you'll save your motors from any wear and tear, you'll save your battery life, and you'll also get smoother footage. Before I go any further, if you are finding this video helpful, please return the favor and click the like and subscribe button. This helps my videos reach more people so that I can continue making useful videos like this. And if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section below. I try to get back to every question within 48 to 72 hours. So the Feiyu Tech Scorp Mini, it's about the same size and has some of the same features as the Zhiyun Crane M2, but there are really two things that set it apart in my opinion. The first is the price. It's only about $199 or 199 euros if you buy it from the Kickstarter link, and I'll put that link in the description below. The second thing, and I just think the most incredible thing about this gimbal, is this LCD touchscreen. This makes it so much easier to navigate through all of the menus, through all of the modes while you're out shooting. If you're a cinematographer, a videographer, a travel vlogger, you know that when you're out there in the busy environment shooting, creating your videos, you don't wanna be fiddling through all of the settings with a scroll wheel or something like that, or you don't even wanna to have to pull up your phone and connect it to mess with all the settings. You just wanna be able to do it through the touchscreen. That to me is one of the best features about this gimbal. It's super lightweight. The battery life is amazing. It's up to 13 hours. It only takes a couple of hours to charge it. And it has all of these buttons and functions right at your fingertips to make it very easy to shoot. After we've balanced it, I just want to turn it on by holding the power button here at the front for a couple of seconds and the gimbal will come on. And the very first thing you wanna do is auto-tune or auto-calibrate the motor. So I'm just gonna click motor power and click auto-tune and click start tuning. Let it sit there, it's gonna wiggle around and vibrate. It's basically just testing the weight of the camera so that you'll have the smoothest shooting possible. So let's talk about some of the basic modes. First is pan follow, and this is usually the one that I use the most. So with pan follow, when you pan to the left or pan to the right, the camera follows. If I tilt down or tilt up, the lens stays pointing forward. Same with if I roll to the right or roll to the left. If I push the M button on the back of the touchscreen, or I can actually touch the touchscreen also, I can change to lock mode. So with lock mode, the camera stays pointing the direction no matter how you move the gimbal. So if I pan, tilt, roll, you can see that the camera always faces the direction it was in. And then I can also go into pan, tilt, follow. So 
you guessed it, follows on my pans, but it also follows on my tilts. There's also one called FPV or, you know, first person view. This one follows in all directions, even roll. What I think is a really cool feature of this gimbal is the portrait mode. So if I double tap the function button on the left side of the screen, the camera goes into the portrait mode. With social media, you know, if you wanna shoot something for TikTok or for Instagram, I'm actually shooting vertically now. This is a huge, huge benefit to this gimbal. And when you're shooting like this, you can actually hold the scorpion tail or the handle to get, you know, really smooth footage for Instagram stories or reels or TikTok. If I connect the Feiyu Scorp Mini app on my phone, then I can get all sorts of cool things like, you know, panoramas, hyperlapses. If I wanna shoot footage of the night sky, I can do all of that through the app. The app has a really great interface, probably the best gimbal app I've actually seen. It's really intuitive and easy to use. So you could also use this as a tripod, for example, so you can point it any direction you want, you know, set it on auto timer, run away, and get your shot. If you ever find that you wanna return the gimbal back to center, just pull the trigger twice. And if you are a vlogger and you wanna shoot some selfie stuff, you can triple tap the trigger and now I can shoot in selfie mode. This is great. You can also notice that at the front there is a USB-C connector. You can connect it to your camera and then you can control all of your camera's functionality like ISO, aperture, etc. through this OLED screen at the front. And then you can also go into the settings and decide what you wanna use this wheel for. You could connect a follow focus motor to your lens through this port here at the front and then pull focus with this. Or I can use this wheel to adjust things like the tilt, the pan, and the roll. Let's go outside and look at some test footage. I'm going to attach my iPhone and I'm gonna run around, I'm gonna walk and run around and I'll show you the stabilization of this gimbal. This is walking up some stairs at a normal pace with my iPhone on the gimbal. And then next I'm going to run up the stairs as fast as I can. And you can see how good of a job the gimbal does with stabilizing the footage. Because here I am running up the same stairs with no gimbal, no stabilization at all. And you can really see the difference. So there you have it. This gimbal for only $199, I mean, it's a steal. You can take this thing in your backpack, you can take it on the airplane, you can take it with you when you're going down to the beach, when you're traveling. Overall, I think this might be my go-to gimbal for when I'm on the move and I don't need to support you know, a big, heavy camera. If I just wanna use a compact camera, a mirrorless camera, or my smartphone or action cam, then this is the gimbal to go with.